civil unrest and vehicle preparedness. During the time of this video, there are multiple cities experiencing civil unrest, and it has been this way for a number of months. It seems like in some locations, things are getting a bit more under control and some areas that are getting worse. But if you live in a high threat environment, maybe an environment that is experiencing some level of civil unrest, what are some common sense steps that you can make to be a little more prepared, in particular, how to prepare your vehicle? Now, in a perfect world, we would all be driving around in bullet resistant vehicles, right? Uh, very you know, robust vehicles. Uh, but the reality is that most of us cannot afford those things. And so you just work with what you have. Whatever the vehicle you have, you work with that. And I would look at, first and foremost, has your vehicle been maintained properly over time? And if not, what is the, the maintenance needs currently? You know, and you want to check the tires, uh, fluids, belts, hoses. Um, in particular, when you're looking at the tires and if you need to replace them because of maybe tread or maybe they're, they're just dry rotting because they're old, you might want to consider run flat tires. So even when they're punctured, it takes a while before they run flat. But those are something to consider. They cost a little bit more money, but you know what? They give you more, more capability to get away from a threat. So run flat tires. Um, in terms of uh, spare tires, though, make sure you have one. Make sure you know how to put one on and replace uh, a flat tire. Make sure you have the tools to do it. And, you know, I know people that their spare tire is, is there. It's in the back of the vehicle, but there's no air in the tire. That's no good. So make sure that the, the spare tire is, is maintained. And you may even want to consider two spare tires. Some people actually feel more comfortable with two. So you have that. You also have uh, sometimes the need for a repair kit or just a vehicle toolkit. And don't also forget to have extra fluids available. You might want to have a few quarts of oil, maybe a half gallon to a gallon of extra coolant. Things like that make a lot of sense. Also, do you have a gas can? Keep a gas can in case you run out of gas. But one of the easiest ways not to run out of gas is always to keep your gas tank over half full. That's something that I always try to do, keep it half full. And if you're on the way home from somewhere and you have plenty of time, you're not in a rush, even if you have, you know, half a tank or more, it might be smart. And, you know, this kind of benefits not only just to enable you to have longer range of travel, but also psychologically, it's very beneficial just go ahead and top off your tank. I mean, it only takes a few minutes, right, to literally just pump a few gallons in there and just top off your tank. Uh, so that's something to consider. Also, you want to consider having uh, fire extinguishers in your vehicle. You want to have them secured. You don't want to just have fire extinguishers rolling around uh, the floorboard of your vehicle. That could be very dangerous if you get into a wreck or if you have to hit the the brakes really fast. So have the fire extinguishers accessible in the cab. Don't just have them buried in the back of a trunk of a vehicle. Have them accessible in the cab and once again secured. And here in the U.S. we have classes of fire extinguishers. And so I would have it rated, you know, a class rating of, of A, B, C. Those are typically the, the most recommended fire extinguishers for vehicles. It's an ABC rated extinguisher. Uh, next is that you would want to have at least a few gallons of water and for the just the sole purpose of decontamination. In case you get hit by pepper spray, uh, tear gas, if you just happen to run into uh, civil unrest and you know you're having to kind of navigate your way out, you may be exposed to chemical agents. So decontamination wipes might be very beneficial as well. Um, there are also other types of soaps and stuff that can be beneficial you might want to have for just the pure uh, purpose of decontamination. If you are in a high threat zone, you may even want to consider some kind of full face respirator. Uh, maybe even go so far as a gas mask. That's up to you. There's a lot of people who pair a gas mask with a full on poncho to prevent any type of irritants from getting on their body. So the poncho is kind of like a, a barrier. Um, switching gears here, though, you may you may have to car camp.
for a night because maybe where you're trying to go through is all just mayhem. Maybe there's civil unrest in all the routes that you normally take to get home. Or maybe there's just no way to get home because that there's no options because of civil unrest. In that case, you may want to drive to a safe location and, and just sleep in your car, you know, car camp. And then hopefully the next day you'll have an opportunity to get back home. Things may have calmed down by then. So you may want to consider having a few things for an overnight, maybe a change of clothes, a blanket, maybe a pillow. Um, it could be a small lantern, just little things like that, right? You may want to have some, uh, obviously, water, a few gallons of water and a, some, some food. Could be some shelf-stable food. Could be just food bars. Things like that make a lot of sense. If you are driving in a known area that is known for unrest or just violence in, in recent days, you may want to, before you even get in your vehicle to, to travel through that area, to put on some type of ballistic protection. Now, if you have body armor, that's awesome. A lot of people do not have body armor. So maybe for you, you just use what you have. So maybe you uh, have a motorcycle, for example, and a lot of motorcycle drivers, they have safety vest. So they fall off the bike. Uh, there's going to be something to help absorb the impact. So maybe you have that. Maybe you put on some kind of bicycle helmet. I don't know. It's whatever you, whatever you feel is appropriate, but it, it isn't completely insane to have some type of protection on. I mean, there are many cases of people just pulling up to a stop sign or to a, you know, a traffic light and they're waiting for a green light and a group of people come up on them with guns and shoot them. So, you know, to, to say that, oh, that's overkill to have body armor on. Um, I disagree. Um, I think that you just do the best you can on trying to create um, common sense barriers between you and the threat. But it's going to be a lot better to have that body armor on you instead of trying to put it on when the threat is presenting itself. You may not have enough time. Uh, next is to have medical, medical options. A, a real trauma kit that's dedicated just for the vehicle and that it's very accessible is a must. Um, and of course, you can have general first aid items as well outside of the trauma kit supplies. But definitely have a real trauma kit. And that includes things like uh, a hemostats, uh, tourniquets, all kinds of bandages, uh, trauma shears. There's a whole list of things you can get that are going to be very beneficial and they could save your life. Um, also in the vehicle, you may want to have some type of backup power supply. And this could be a, a battery bank of some type, or it could just be, um, you know, a power bank that's portable, that's in a backpack or a uh, portable solar power um, you know, panel, there's all those kind of things could be something to consider, especially if you may have to car camp because maybe you can't get home because of civil unrest. Also consider self-defense tools. It could be something as simple as a baseball bat that you can get at a thrift store for just a couple of bucks. It could be something more extensive. Uh, just always follow your local laws uh, and be proficient in whatever you choose and to have it close at hand if you're driving. Also, something to have close at hand, especially at night, is a really good tactical light. And I'm talking about a high output light that you could use for self-defense, but mainly to identify threats, especially if you come to a stop sign uh, or a stop light that you can uh, look on your peripheral uh, to identify if anyone's coming from each side. Uh, lastly, I would recommend a get home bag, a GHB, uh, full of essentials so that you can get home in one piece. And if you have to ditch your vehicle, it's probably a really bad situation. So you want to be as light on your feet as possible. You want to be able to jog if you need to with this bag. So you don't want it to be heavy. You don't want it to be bulky. You just want the bare essentials, really. Um, now, how to gauge how much stuff you should have in there, like in terms of food and water. Um, well, just kind of look at how the average distance that you travel from your home and figure out from there how long would it take for you to get home. And I would double it in terms of the provisions. So in case that you have to make detours or if you are injured, it may take twice as long to get back home. So for example, if it normally takes 24 hours to walk home from work and work is like the farthest that you typically, you know, travel on a regular basis. Okay. You have 24 hours to get home, but I would have at least 48 hours of provisions just in case uh, you have unknown variables that come up. So I hope this helps you guys be careful, be safe. 
Uh, I really do hope and pray that things get better in the United States. Um, but until things do get better, be prepared and to prepare your vehicle.